I'm gonna show you how to use the torque wrench the right way, because this is the right video. It is super important to understand this because if you don't get the torque values right when you're torquing up your wheels, they could fall off. I've got a story for you, but first let's start out with this dial over here. This is foot pounds. This is what you're measuring your torque in. Now, if you happen to be in Europe or somewhere else, it's gonna be in Newton meters, but this is good old US of A. So these values here start from 10 and go up to 150. This is a 150 foot pound torque wrench and this is a half inch drive over here. And I'll tell you what that means in just a second. So in order to set the torque values correctly, you need to understand how this works. So I have this handle, which also happens to be a dial. And you can see over here, I've got a zero and I've actually got a second zero. And that's because it's a zero for each side of this. So this happens to be one number and this happens to be the other number. That's how they do it. And so to get it to 95 foot pounds, which is what this car is, and I'll tell you why that's important. What we wanna do is rotate this dial all the way up until we get the zero on the nine, one more time. All right, so now we can see the zero is lined up with that 90. And I'm gonna turn it five more pounds. I'm gonna stop and then I'm gonna turn this little guy at the bottom, this is the lock. I'm gonna twist that and lock it in place so this doesn't move around. And before I did this, I, I loosened it up. So that's the basics. So for this video, I'm using Lexavon torque wrenches and Lexavon did actually send this to me for free for review. I think they're pretty good, but I'm not being paid for this review or anything. So just keep that in mind. And the reason why you wanna set your torque values correctly is because the wheel could fall off your car, I'm not exaggerating. So I was at a track day a couple years ago with my Nissan 240SX. And when you're at the track, you're putting a lot of stresses on the wheels and tires. And what you should do before you get back on the road and go home is tighten them up and set the torque values correctly. I didn't do that. And about 20 minutes into my trip, something happened. But before we get into that, let's talk about how exactly to torque up the wheels in your car. So first off, I need to use a socket. And this is a half inch drive. When I say half inch, that means the size of this bad boy right over here. And it has a little, I'm not even sure what they call it, a little ball on there. And so what I'm gonna do to make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna pop this extension into here, like so. This happens to be dual, it's 19 and 17. This is also Lexavon. Most of them are just a single number on each side, but this works absolutely fine. Then I pop this guy into here. You see this little ball here, pops right into here, snaps in. And don't worry about it not being super, super tight because this is not the most expensive torque wrench in the world. This is around $30, which I think is great to do something like this for my car. So the next thing I'm gonna do is tighten these up to their correct value. Now your torque wrench can go two ways. So you got this little thing over here just to flip it the correct direction. Don't worry if you haven't got it right, just flip it to what you think is the correct direction put this on, I'll always do this by hand, of course. Get it right on the lug, there we go. And so now, you can hear these little clicks going on when I move it like this. So there's a little cam and a little gear in here where the teeth uh, pop, the cam pops between the teeth and does this. So I'm gonna tighten it to just one click, but you're actually gonna hear two clicks. And the reason for that is, when I tighten it to the first click, when I'm done, the tooth is then gonna the gear is gonna pop onto the next tooth and make a second clicking sound, but you stop after the first click. So remember, I set it to 95, and I'm just gonna tighten it up very sort of gently till there's a little bit of tension on it, just like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it in one continuous stroke to I get the click. I'm gonna put my hand here just to kind of make it uh, reinforce the whole thing, and I'm just gonna do one stroke. So that second click, was it releasing. That's basically it. I've got it set to 95 pound feet right now. And what happened was I didn't set it to the correct value coming back from the track about 20 minutes into the drive. I start hearing a funny little clicking sound. I don't really know what it is. I just continue, there's a lot of traffic. I continue down the freeway and a little bit farther, I feel this vibration and I'm thinking, man, something's up with my brakes. I'm gonna go check my brakes. So I pull over to the side of the road and I find that of the four studs, one of them has broken off and the other three were on there kind of loosely. So the wheel was literally doing this. The wheel was not that far from falling off. 
So that's why you always want to set the torque values correctly. Now, another thing you want to do is maintain your torque wrench pro properly too. And people ask, should I use this to loosen up the wheels in my car? Now, you certainly can if you're in a pinch, you can do this, but really what you should do is you should get a breaker bar like this. This is pretty cheap. I'll link down one below on Amazon. This is like 15, 20 bucks, something like that. There's nothing to it. There's no gearing. There's nothing to break. This is the correct thing to use because what happens is when you start using a torque wrench to loosen up the bolts in your car, the spring in here, which is set to this very finely calibrated number, goes out of whack. And the torque value that you're setting could be way far off from what you think it is. So you might say, hey, I've set it to 95 foot pounds, when in reality it's only 80, and that's bad. So if you can afford a torque wrench, you can definitely afford one of these. You should definitely get two of them. Don't cheap out, guys. These are not that expensive. You want to keep this thing working for as long as possible. This is the best way to do it. So to loosen it up, you just use this breaker bar, and that's how you do it. Super simple. That's the first thing to maintaining. The second thing you want to do to maintain it is you want to store it with the spring loosened up. So take, so first off, loosen up the lock nut thing at the bottom and take this all the way down to about 10 pounds or so and then just tighten it up. And it even tells you right here, store it lowest setting. And that's because the spring in here, you wanna make sure that the spring doesn't get out of whack like I just told you a second ago. And the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna store it in the box that it came with. And that's for two reasons. One is, Obviously, this is a hard box, so it protects it from damage, which is kind of important. You want to keep this from getting scratched up. You want to be able to read the numbers. The second thing, this keeps moisture off of it, too. So this box is actually really important to store it. They're all pretty much the same, and they're pretty, pretty durable. Now, if you're torquing up the wheels on your car or anything else, you're going to need some extensions. So these are pretty trick extensions. These are cool because these have two different sizes on one actual socket, which makes them pretty unique and they save a lot of space. So normally this would be six. So I've got 17 millimeter, 19 millimeter, 21 millimeter and seven eighths, 13 sixteenths and three quarters. And I have a little mini extension in here too. So I like this because this fits in the back of my car and most cars nowadays are 19. This car happens to be 17, but these are all the super common sizes. So this is a nice little set. And also these extensions are pretty nice here too. Again, these are half inch extensions and these are different lengths. So I've got six inch, eight inch, and three inch. And I wish I had a nice little box, but it doesn't. These extensions are black and that means these are impact drivers. In fact, you can see it right here on the box. And an impact driver means you can use it with a power tool like this little Milwaukee M12 fuel driver. And this is going to apply an impact force to the nut that you're uh, trying to get on or off. And that's what the black means. Now, typically you don't wanna use this on wheel lugs to get them off unless they're like super, super rusty or stuck or something like that on impact. I wouldn't recommend it for that. Use it for something else that's a little bit less critical, but this is pretty handy for rusted out stuff. And the impact means it's the metal is a little bit, um, it's not going to, it's resistant to shearing and breaking essentially. So it is it's designed for this kind of usage. So that's what the black one means. The silver ones are perfectly fine too, but you shouldn't use them so much with an impact. I've got another torque wrench video right over here. Click it. Thanks for watching.